What's up, Penguins? Today we do 2019 number seven on gene expression. So researchers studying patterns of gene expression in mice. The researcher collected samples from six different uh, tissues in a healthy mouse, the liver, the heart, the brain, kidney, pancreas, and skeletal muscle, and measured the amount of mRNA from the six different genes. The data is shown in figure one. So you can see here that a white box implies that there's no mRNA. The gray box is a moderate amount of mRNA, and a black box is a high amount of mRNA. Um, and so we have to think to ourselves, okay, mRNA is what's made um, from reading the DNA. So during transcription, the DNA is read and the mRNA is synthesized. And then the mRNA will leave the nucleus and go out to the ribosome to be translated. Okay. Um, so part A says to identify the gene that's most likely to encode a protein as an essential component of glycolysis. Provide reasoning to support your identification. So we have to think to ourselves, okay, which of our cells are going to need to undergo glycolysis? Well, all of our cells have to undergo glycolysis because glycolysis is the first step of cellular respiration, which our cells are need to undergo. So what of our, which of our genes is found in all of the cells? Well, gene G is found in all cells. And so since it's found in all cells and um, glycolysis occurs in all cells, we would say that gene G is our gene of interest. Um, so identification of gene G, reasoning would be gene G is the only gene expressed in all tissues and glycolysis occurs in them all. You could have also said the mRNA is the only mRNA present in all cells and the glycolysis occurs in all the tissues. So the student says gene G is most likely to encode a protein that is an essential component of glycolysis because the mRNA is at least moderately present in all cells of tissues. All tissues undergo glycolysis to get a small amount of ATP to function. Gene G is the only gene that has mRNA present in all cells, so all of these tissues are able to code for that specific protein. So part B says researcher observed that tissue with a high level of gene H mRNA did not always have a high level of gene H protein. Provide reasoning to explain how tissues with high gene H mRNA could have no gene H protein. So this is dealing with our translation component. So I have a high amount of mRNA, but I don't have a lot of protein. So I have a reduction in my translation. So number one, maybe the mRNA didn't leave the nucleus. If it doesn't leave the nucleus, it's not going to get translated. That would lead us to a high mRNA, but then have no protein. We could also see that the mRNA just wasn't translated. So there was no protein formed because of some reasoning that the mRNA was uh, inhibited. Or we could just talk about that there's some type of interference. RNA interference like siRNA um, can uh, break apart that mRNA um, to it. And we also just see post-transcriptional modifications. Maybe there wasn't a cap and a tail added to it, and so it wasn't able to export or it wasn't able to be protected from those hydrolytic enzymes. So students said tissues could have a high level of gene H mRNA, but not a gene H protein because the mRNA was never translated. The gene H may have been transcribed from DNA to mRNA, but the mRNA and the tRNA do not translate this particular strand. It will not code for the amino acids and therefore not become a functional protein. So if that was helpful, remember, a 5 penguins just says, bye y'all.